making their way out towards the track. They're off. They're racing away. They have 10 flights of hurdles to jump in the Coral Cup. And as they run down towards the first of those, Beacon Edge, Guard Your Dreams, Western Fold, uh, from De Capo Glory as they get over number one, which they all clear with Black Bamboo towards the back of the field with Rambo T and also Bally Adam. Out wide, Mark of Gold and also Shambali Kid and a Franciscan Rock. Built by Ballymore, centre of the leading group, dark blue and yellow jacket, a red cap as they get over number two two and they have a bit of a run now to the home straight before they'll get to three so majesty and my tire in mid division at this stage in brazil behind those doddy the great hugs the running rail in the light blue jacket jagora is right in behind that to langadan and benson and behind those is brazil then comes finest evermore racing uh, just ahead of black bamboo and lambron and lucky place and bally adam and rambo t is at the back of the field so they settle down, making their way on towards home. Beacon Edge, maroon jacket, whitish colours, western fold. Mark of gold in green and yellow is right in behind those as they move towards the home straight. Guard Your Dreams in red, De Capo Glory in blue, very pale jacket, Doddy the Great is next. And then uh, De Capo Glory blue with a red on the sleeves as they come to number three, built by Ballymore. Dark blue, yellow and red is in company with this uh, majesty, a white cap is next. Looked like Brazil was a little clumsy back in the field there. As they continue on down the straight on towards uh, number three, Shambali Kid and white cap, same jacket as the leader, is uh, third of the way down the field at the moment. Lang Dan's a bit hidden by him in blue and yellow. Jigoro, white and green jacket, a red cap is off towards the inner of the course. The nose band in Mai Tai is in company with this. And then comes Franciscan Rock in yellow and red. And the orange on the left is finest evermore. He's just head of black bamboo in white and blue colours. In red, Lombron is towards the back with Lucky Place in yellow and blue. Rambo T is on the left at the rear of the yellow. And Bally Adam is alongside as they come then towards number four looks like western fold might just rise in front here does gets over it by only about a neck or so as the field clear the fourth and run away to the far side of the course uh, Beacon Edge is against the running rail trying to go back into the lead and a length and a half behind those comes Mark of Gold. Uh, Doddy the Great has made headway, lies fourth at the moment. Shambali Kid is behind this to the red of Guard Your Dreams. Sam Majesty hugging the running rail, hoop jacket of green and yellow. Built by Ballymore, yellow stripe on a dark blue jacket, red cap is next and Guard Your Dreams in red around the outside of this. De Capo Glory is next and Francisco Rock is followed by Gigaro. Races the head of Langadan and Benson and behind those Brazil and Lombron. And then comes together a Black Bamboo in company with Mai Tai. A lucky place follows those. Lombron and Bally Adam the next two. Rambo T is still at the back of the field as they move then on towards number five. So they're getting to halfway in the Coral Cup and Mai Tai made a right mess of that and drops now to be towards the back of the field. In front though, Beacon Edge and Western Fold to guard your dreams. Mark of Gold and Doddy the Great and Shan Bally Kidder in company with those. De Capo Glory is there. Then it will be built by Ballymore. What's he gonna be eighth at the moment? Franciscan Rock and Finest Evermore in Langadan and Sir Majesty and Brazil are right in behind him as they jump. The next flight of hurdles towards the top of the hill. Mai Tai is right at the back of the field with Rambo T. Lombron is way back amongst them. Lucky play towards the rear as well they've got four to jump from here and beacon edge still leading western fold in second position Doddy the great stalks them on the inside uh, then behind those is Mark of Gold. Uh, they're followed by Shambali Kid as they come to one on the top of the hill. Behind those is Guard Your Dreams and built by Ballymore and Langadan and Sam Majeste and Benson and Brazil. Jagora's just ahead of this to Black Bamboo. Losing ground is finest evermore. She's widest on the course. Lombron and Bally Adam beginning to make some progress, hugging the inside. Mai Tai is struggling a little bit at the back of the field. Lucky Place is ahead of this. Rambo T is the back marker. They're headed for home they've only got three more to jump and it's still beacon edge and western fold to the yellow cap of mark of gold and then to capo glory guard your dreams look towards the left about four from the left built by ballymore uh, takes it with the leaders uh, sir majesty in error doddy the greats in behind the leading group shambali kid is next bally adam is still making progress towards the back of the field guard your dreams 
is on the extreme left. Langadan is right in behind the leaders, as also is Black Bamboo. Wide open as ever at the second last. And it's the two Gigginstown horses, Beacon Edge, and with the white cap Shambali Kid, who've come through to take it up from Lucky Place. Yellow and blue on the left trying to make progress. Langadan, yellow and blue as well, has moved into third. Bally Adam is coming from the back of the field. Dottie the Great is behind this. Franciscan Rock is still there. And then comes to Capo Glorious. Langadan takes it up now to Shambali Cat as they come to Walter to last. Between the pair, Bally Adam. Franciscan Rock is behind those. And now Langadan and Harry Skelton has taken it up as they run into the closing stages. Langadan by three will win the Coral Cup. Second place, Bally Allen from Shambali Kid. Lucky place, Franciscan Rock, there, followed by Black Bamboo to Capo Glory. First horse ever to win two Coral Cups. His trainer is Dan Skelton. Seven winners at the Cheltenham Festival, six of them in the hardest handicaps that you can find. You've managed to do it again with Langadan. He's a remarkable little horse. He had a surgery after the meeting last year and missed Aintree. Colum, who owns him, has had a torrid time, two big shots out two weeks ago. This horse just knows how to do it for us on the big day. I'm very, very proud of the whole team. He bled on occasions this, this, this year at the race course and um, he had ulcers. We treated those and He's just a remarkable little horse. You said on Thursday night on Road to Cheltenham that the horse was just beginning to please you, was just beginning to come. What had you seen? Just the last three weeks, he just started to come alive. And I said to Amber on Saturday, so we're working with the slowest horse we can find and make sure you win. And she only won by a head. So I thought, well, the head's better than nothing. He hadn't been, <laughs> he's been, he hadn't been winning a raffle by a head recently. So uh, it's just a remarkable little animal. We've spoken before about how important it is to get on the board at the Cheltenham Festival. It means so much. It towers over the season, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, and you, you, you know, it does. And when you get here, it does even more. Um, but you know, we, we're trying to do a job 365 days of the year. These four mean more than anything else. Of course, they do. We're just trying to bring the right horses here, and we're chuffed a bit. I, I'm so pleased for you. It's been a difficult run up to the festival, hasn't it? With the George Gently case lingering on, you put out a statement on Saturday, and you talked about the chair of the judicial panel saying that there were mitigating and aggregating factors to your conduct. What have you learned as a result of this whole process? I've learned so much, it, it, too much to go into detail. I'm just so glad that's behind us. Yeah. I am. And, you know, I could talk about a lot more, but I, you know, I need to put that behind me. And, you know, the, the, the chair was right in what she said. There was some good, there was some bad. And, and it's there for people to read if they want to. It's Cheltenham Festival success for Harry Skelton and most importantly, back-to-back -back Coral Cups with Lango Dam. Unprecedented. It's never been done before. How does it feel? No, brilliant. Um, but he's a wonderful little horse. Um, you ride him in amongst them like that and he thrives off it. He was getting knocked about the top of the hill. Um, but I was following the two horses I really thought, the three, I thought um, the Gigginstown horse, I thought um, built in Baltimore, um, well, built in Ballymore and, 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 and Willie's horse. So I was in the, you know, I was happy where I was, but he just, today, he travelled real well and for a lot longer than he did last year. And it was just a question of, you know, not really letting him go too soon. But um, he's magic, you know, he's not very big, but he's, um, uh, he's, he's, he's been superb. Were you coming here with the same kind of confidence as this day last year? Because to my eye from the outside, he doesn't seem to have been as well as he was this time last year. No, like we've gone through a few little issues with him there. Like the last day, he actually had a bit of blood from the nostril, um, which was stated uh, on the day. And like he just hadn't really been firing like we probably wanted him to. But in the last sort of month, three weeks, we've managed to get him out onto our grass gallops. Um, that's really turned him on, you know, and really brought out the improvement in him. Um, and um, yeah, we obviously left plenty to work on for the day, and that's what you do to train these horses for big handicaps like that. But Dan's done a fantastic job, and Amber Blythe, our, our head girl uh, who's in charge of him, magnificent job with him all year. And it sounds like it's the kind of scenario that he thrives in as well. He, he does, and like you know, he's he's actually what he thrives in is is, is is when you actually ride him in amongst things a little bit more, and he's you know when you're allowed to do that in a bigger field, he loves that. Um, you know, and, and, and when that happens, he's very good. I said before with you how important it is, and just saying with Dan, to get winners at the Cheltenham Festival. It just it towers over the season to such a degree and that you could have the most brilliant season, and if you haven't won here, it doesn't seem to count for as much as it should. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, look, there's no hiding the fact what Cheltenham is. Um, Cheltenham is, is a very, very important four days of our calendar. It's our Olympics. 
you know, we want to win 365 days of the year, but these four more days are just that little bit more important. It's where everyone who comes into National Hunt Racing strives to win. It's, look at this, it's a theatre. It is like no other festival, it is like no other meeting. We shouldn't get away from the fact how special this place is and how hard it is to win. You know, we want to thrive and we want to go to the very top and we want to, you know, we keep trying to do so and we just keep building and try and get there. But um, look, today we've had a winner, it's very special to do that. Might you be back here with an expected party in a couple of races' time? That'd be nice. Um, whether he just handles that softer ground remains to be seen, but um, the handicap has given him a chance for running on, you know, a stiff enough mark all year, but we'll see how we get on. Yeah, and a big day tomorrow as well, but that's for tomorrow. Enjoy this. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Watch live racing now on RacingTV.com.